Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you above everything in our lives. We, are, as we exalt you above our experiences, above our situation, above our circumstances. Lord, we exalt you to take all the glory. Lord, thank you for the eighth day in the second month. Thank you for going out and thank you for coming in. Thank you for as many that are coming from their workplace. Thank you for the time to pray again. To you alone be the praise in Jesus' name. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. You are all welcome. I hope you have a wonderful day. The Lord will continue to strengthen us in Jesus' name. Brethren, we have 21 days to go in the fasting. The Lord will help us. We will not be tired. We, we are under obligation because fasting, in, in our devotional yesterday, though we didn't, we didn't go through it anyway, I learned a lot of things from our devotional yesterday. And I want you to please just check through it, especially workers. Check through it. You may not know why you are fasting. You may not know. For example, maybe one or two or three of us, we did not fast last year. But the question is, why are you fasting this year? You may not even know. Many of us, we have never fasted in our lives. But now you are fasting. And you are asking yourself, ah, why am I fasting? You may not even know. The Bible says, it is God who works in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You may not understand, but I pray the Almighty God will give you understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Every step you take towards God, it takes a longer step towards you. Every time you set your heart to seek the Lord, let me tell you, no matter how small, every time you take step to move closer to God in studying, in fasting, in praying, in giving, whatever, whatever, whatever that makes you to come closer to God is a setup. It's a setup to take you to greater height. Hallelujah. You may not even understand. In fact, many of us, our, our, our expectation may be different. Many of us will be fasting for something that is contrary to what even God wants to do in your life at this moment. But you are just doing it fine. You give honor to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. After all, we had a testimony of a young man that said they told the father not to eat for five days because they wanted to do operation for him. Many of us, if they ask us not to eat for seven days, hallelujah, because they want to, do, to, keep, to keep you alive, you will do it. Is it not true? But this one is to, to come close to God. It's to come close to God. That's why I keep saying, fasting is not a legal thing. It's a heart thing. Lord, I want to seek you more. Lord, I want to encounter you more. Lord, I need you. That is just the truth. So if God has said, okay, through this fasting, I'm praying, I'm going to do something wonderful in your life, you may not even, you may not even know what he wants to do. For God is not mocked. Before we started fasting, God had gone through 2016. Before we started at all. He had gone through 2016. He knows. He knows everything about 2016. So just looking for an opportunity to connect us to what he had conquered, he had won for us. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. No matter how you may look at yourself, immediately God step into your matter. That thing turns around. It turns around. I was discussing with my wife. We were talking about, you know, issues of life. You look at somebody's life and situation, and by the time you look at it, you say, God. By the time you look at your own, you say, <laughs> you know, you just keep quiet. And I told her, I said, every one of them, their own, our own, is to take our focus to God. God, we need you. Hallelujah. By the time you summarize all our situation, if we want to be sincere, you discover that we will look up. God, intervene. God, what? Intervene. 
In Acts of Apostles chapter 3, you will see the summary of what I'm talking about. In Acts of Apostles chapter 3, Acts of Apostles chapter 3, you know, that is where we got our core test this month. Acts of Apostles chapter 3. But I want us to look at from verse 1. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. The night hour. That's three o'clock in the afternoon. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. I will have stopped there, but let me read through because if God permits, during this week or thereabouts, we may need to come back to that scripture. He said to Ask arms from those who entered the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask for arms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and the ankle bones received strength. So he, he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking Leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, God help us. We will pray tonight. Just let's pick something. Number one thing that this man had as a problem is not even the fact that he was born lame. Many of us, we have natural issues that we cannot help ourselves. We cannot help ourselves. They are natural. We were born with it. But that is not the end of the story. Many a times, we look at our lives and sincerely you just conclude, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. Immediately you get to a point, there's nothing I can do about any matter you have lost it. Fine, they are natural thing. Hello? You were born with it. But never you get to a point and say, there's nothing I can do about this matter. Or is there anything that is difficult for God? Is there anything that is impossible? Immediately you just conclude and say it in your heart, there's nothing I can do about this matter. Even to pray about it will be difficult. Because you have already concluded in your heart, there's nothing I can do. I met my father like that. I met my mother like that. This is what has been happening in our family. So there's nothing I can do about it. You have lost it. That's number one. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Genesis chapter 18, verse 6 says almost the same thing. Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the heart by your great power and your heart stretched hand. There is nothing too hard for you. So the answer to the first notion is Jeremiah 32, 17. Never you believe that that matter, that issue, though you were born with it, though it was, it is, it is a characteristic of your family, of your, of your culture, of your nature, of, of your nation, don't agree that there is nothing anybody can do about it. Many will say, "I've tried my best. I'm tr- I've tried my best, and there's nothing I can do about it, and there's nothing I will do about it because I've tried my best." No.
when your best stops, God will step in. In other words, there's nothing that is beyond prayer. There's nothing that is beyond prayer. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, let's say 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Because I'm seeing us, no, you say, it has been like that, and it will be like that. That's not God. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. This is a woman that is 99 years. The Lord will answer us in Jesus' name. Don't have that notion that since I was born with it, since that is the matter, since it has been there in my family, since my father could not do anything about it, since I've also tried all my best, then that is the end of the story. It is wrong. Number two thing I want to point to us, because we are going to pray, bringing forth the hand of God, according to Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen, is that this man, we got to know later that this man was 40 years. So, he has friends that he tells thank you every day. He has family members, he has friends that he tells them thank you every day. But that thank you did not take him to his rest. Every day they bring him, they drop him at the gate. And he said, thank you. God bless you. May God answer you too. May God help you too. But that is not the best for him. What is the second thing I want us to pray about tonight? Never you conclude you have reached where you are going. Though you may be having accolades, you may be having people saying you have arrived. You may be having people telling you that is the best you can ever get. Immediately you accept such accolades, you miss your rest. Every time they bring him there, for whatever reason, some of them, they charge him. So if he doesn't pay in the money, they won't bring him there. Some of them. But whenever they bring him to that place, he will tell them, thank you. I have arrived. If not for you, I won't be here today. Oh, Mr. Simon. Oh, thank you, thank you. God bless you. I will see you in the evening. Make sure you come. He said, I won't come. I won't come. I will come by 2 o'clock to come and collect my share. If you don't give me, I won't come in the evening. Please, 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 please. And in the evening, immediately he comes to carry him. He said, thank you for coming. Because I know if you carry me today, you will also bring me tomorrow. Every notion that tells you that you have arrived or that tells you this is the best you can be, God will remove it today in Jesus' name. Amen. And number three. All this is family friends. I try to check the Bible. I try to check the Bible. Maybe Bible scholars, you will tell me. Is it wrong for a lame man to enter the temple? Hmm? It's wrong. Eh? A lame man, not a leper. <laughs> no, tell me. I'm just asking. Eh? Please, if you check tomorrow and come back, come and. But I'm trying to check. I, I said I'm trying to check. Is it wrong for a lame man to enter into the temple? Why didn't they take him inside? Eh? Mm. Mm. 
Do you know there are people around you, they are just interested in what they get from you? They even know the truth that will take you to the next level, they won't tell you. Because I'm just, if he had been a leper, I agree. According to the law, Jewish law is unclean. But a, a crippled man, I'm still checking. But let us assume today that it is not wrong to enter into the temple. But the question is, for 40 years, why have they not taken him into the temple at least once? What happened? We are going to pray tonight. Everyone around me that has the necessary information for my elevation, for my progress, for my breakthrough, that have been hiding it, hoarding it, let them release it. Because the man was so excited when he encountered another set of friends. So you might, be need, to, you might need to pray tonight, my beloved brethren. Lord, connect me to another people that will take me to my rest. He said, ah, we've been friends since we were in primary school. What has the friendship brought to your life? Oh, we've been friends. Ah, no, no, no. We are family friends. But <laughs> what has he done to take you to the next level? Bible says, this man had been there. Fine, I agree with you. They just put him there so that they can get something from him. It could be. Or they just put him there and they will enter. To find the joy of being in the presence of the Lord. To see many things happening. And for whatever reason. But I'm still asking that question. Why didn't they take him inside? After all, we've seen in the Bible. Where Jesus entered inside the temple. He healed the lame. He healed people that are what? Sick. So why was this man always at the gate for 40 years? The prayer we are going to pray tonight, the Lord will give us utterance. And finally, because of his location, because of his experience, even when he met his destiny helper, his expectation was wrong. Even when he met people that will take him to his rest, the Bible says he feeds his attention on them seeking for money. Shall we please rise? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, you have been so good, Jesus you are so good to me, oh Lord, you, you are excellent.